in general um, as a spiritual path and spiritual practice. Uh, very often there's a sense of, uh, uh, we, we experience a sense of duality that we always like uh, trying to run away from darkness or avoid darkness renounce darkness and uh, going toward light, toward somewhere, not exactly knowing that where there is, but hoping, dreaming, expecting, struggling. We do that very, very natural uh, sense of uh, common approach. But uh, in a teaching such as like in a Dzogchen teaching, um, it always says that um, the essence and the nature, compassion, these qualities, the enlightened quality, the Buddha nature, it's within everything and everyone, uh, in every form. So it's not something that the normal, the attitude about running away from something, going away, uh, towards some, somewhere, it's, it seems like not exactly the right. But of course, we are so used to that idea, and we, we maybe sometimes we even know it, but still we don't, we still we behave the same, and our attitude and approach is still remain the same. So according to the, like these teachings, like uh, the dream and sleep yoga teaching, it's coming from Maju, it's the Mother Tantra, Maju Sangje Jusum, in the Bhavan tradition. According to these teaching, Basically, it's, you know, for example, it teaches one other, it's called Tabduglam Chair. Tabduglam Chair means uh, six method, uh, six paths or six methods. So among these six paths or six methods is basically dream and sleep is one of the two, two methods or two paths. And that what, that, what it means is, as I said earlier, that where we, trying to avoid something, we're trying to run, 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 uh, move towards something. Very often, like um, very uh, uh, deep sense of duality, deep sense of white and black, dark and, dark and light. And, uh, and, and we often uh, think that, like for example, in ignorance, there's nothing to find. Or in negative emotion, it's not good. Anger, it's not good. Or when you don't have energy, it's not good. Uh, so, but it's not exactly like that. In anger, there is the essence. In thought, there is essence. In darkness, there is that essence. In dream, there is that essence. In sleep, there is that essence. So places where we think it's not, there's not or nothing to find or you cannot find, but it's the opposite. It's there. And the reason why it's important to pay attention to it is because it is very, very much part of our everyday life. So one third of life, if you sleep, so if you say there's nothing, nothing in dream and if there's nothing in the sleep, so one third of your life, there's nothing. But it's not exactly like that. So in dream, there's a possibility to discover that Buddha nature. In sleep, there's a possibility to discover that nature. In fear, for example, whole practice of chu. In simple way to look at it, in basically in fear, you will discover the Buddha nature and build, find confidence. But it's your relation to fear, it's your relation to sleep, it's your relation to dream. So that's, I think that's what it exactly uh, we need to, to look here is that we are so used, everyday life, we are so used to sleep and so used to dream, but we are so used to not pay any attention to them. And I know every time when I'm uh, teaching these, go, doing a workshop on a dream and sleep, I, 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 we, we will be spending a whole day explaining exactly what kind of practices that you need to do before you go to sleep, step one, step two, step three, step four, whatever, 
And then the next morning, people will come back, and I said, did you do it? I said, sorry, I forgot about it. <laughs> so they came from thousands of miles to, to one specific location with very clear intention, and they get a whole day spent, or get whole detailed instruction, and that very moment when they're supposed to apply it, they just forgot about it. It's amazing. So why they forget about it? Because they are used to forgetting for the last 20 years, or 30 years, or 10 years. It depends on how old you are. So you're used to forgetting. So it's a very, very a strong pattern or habit in which you go to sleep. It's a very routine, strong habit you go to sleep. So, so to change that into, uh, into a spiritual practice, we need to look a whole new way that our dream and sleep, it's, it's a very uh, important and deep place we can have a personal development. A place, dream, and place where, a uh, very important place where uh, there is a spiritual development. And so during, during this week, we, we, you know, many of you experience that, and I know many times when I'm traveling around, uh, uh, people, I see, I witness uh, the experiences that people, when we, people go to sleep, uh, trying to apply the sleep yoga practice, and people go to sleep, and people say something like, uh, when the practice is successful, people say something like, I'm not sure if I actually follow sleep. Yeah. I felt awake. But I was not completely awake. I, was th I think I was sleeping. But whatever that is, but it was very restful. Very restful. So in the teaching also it says that... Um, Sleep of clear light, it's not exactly like a, uh, you know, so it's, it's experiences where you, you don't know exactly you're sleeping, you don't know exactly you're not sleeping, but, but it can happen. So, so one thing uh, I feel like for, for ordinary people, to, at least, I'm not older people, I, I definitely look at that way and I try to apply that way also. Uh, it's a very simple, um, how you say, um, in a way maybe a little bit mundane, very simple uh, expectations from the practice is where that every night when we go to sleep, we carry so much stuff into the, this beautiful sacred place. Because we accumulate so much during the daytime, everything, the way you, the world that you have created, the way you look at this world, where you respond to the, this world, where you you defending, protecting is constant defending, protecting situations. It's very exhausting, and of course, some people do more than other people. But when you defend and protect, trying to protect, I don't know what you're trying to defend and what you're trying to protect, but you are defending, protecting the whole day. And it's very exhausting. When you're very exhausting, when you, when you, when you did not have much success, you, you are mad at five people, you are, I don't know. You don't want to talk with the two people. You have a plan to meet with the six people. I don't know, you have all these things. And, uh, and to carry all those things into the night, imagine what it does to your body. Somebody who is not well to begin with. And what it can do to their body. Somebody who is not feeling so much peace in life to start with. You carry all those things in your sleep. You cannot expect to wake up restful good mood, happy, you cannot expect that. So 
looking for trying to find our essence, Buddha nature, clear light, it's a great goal. But at least not carry things into the night, I think it's urgent goal. There's urgency in there. If there's a clearly uh, option, if you, if you clearly trust that you can do something that you will not carry, you will leave day as a day and you will deal with it next morning, but you're not going to carry that into my deep, sacred space. This is the place where I recover, I connect. Like a computer, right? You have to, how you say, shut it down. There is a specific button called, called restart. And every time you go, first thing you go to the computer place, there was a digit. Let's restart first. And very often, maybe you restart something, very often, People who are not very familiar with this technology, then when you restart one thing, everything is okay, working. But then maybe it's a greater, more than, a little bit more problem than just restarting, then they have to clean something from the software, issues of the software, right? Then it's a greater problem, there's a hardware problems. But the most, most of the time, it's like a software problem. So most of the time, it's your attitude. Before you go to sleep, if you, if you trust, you can, especially if you have witness, then you, you, you remember, I did it, I felt it, I witnessed it, and I'm going to repeat this. This will be my routine things to do. If possible, every night, if not, at least three, four times a week. I mean, for me, personally, it's been very, very important to see that way, to do it. Because it's also, it's like a, it's a well-being. It's not only like a, rainbow body is a very luxury, luxury thing, you know. Like a, enlightenment is like a big, big goal. But getting good rest is an immediate thing. So I think it's really, really important to, to, uh, to everybody that before you go to sleep, think about this is the a very important spiritual sacred journey into a dream and sleep. Uh, no matter how heavy your sleep is, no matter, as we say, say no matter how heavy it is, how, how dark it is, uh, how thick it is, and how long it has been, it does not matter. The clear light, it's in that darkness. The clear light, it's in that thickness. The clear light is then that aging ignorance. Aged ignorance. <laughs> and, and then that sense of trusting that when the light is il illuminated, it doesn't ask how how long it has been, th how thick it is, or it doesn't ask how dark it is, it doesn't ask how long it has been, it just clears. That, some sense, I think, some sense, I think, is important to, to look at that way, because uh, uh, in, maybe you might not say that way, think that way, but maybe in a deep sense, there's a belief that me, and illumination, forget about it. <laughs> so, okay, so now coming to the dream and sleep. So what is the differences between dream and sleep? In a very, very simple way to, to have some examples, it will be right this moment right this very moment. 
You are awake, right? Everybody's awake. <laughs> if you are not thinking, that means you're not judging. You are able to remain in that space. And be aware of that space. And still listen to me. It's like you're sleeping. You're sleeping and you're aware. You're aware of that space. You're aware of your aware. And you're aware of my voice. You're not elaborating anything this moment. You're aware because I encourage you to be aware of it. In the same situation, you might not be aware if I have not encouraged you to be aware of the same state, that is not this clear light. That is that is a luck. That is there, luck awareness. Here is there. There is a presence of awareness. It's the differences. Certainly, so that's a sleep yoga, kind of example of sleep yoga in the waking state. Now, certainly, you have a thought. Thought about somebody bothers you. Some discomfort. And immediately, you're looking at that person. You are creating some more stories, possible stories. You're fearful. You don't know what's going to happen. You have a doubt. And you are projecting certain things can happen. You're dreaming. You're daydreaming, and you go into quite detailed length, as we know. We have no idea what you're seeing is, if it's true. We have no idea what you think if it's true. We have no idea what you think might happen if it's true. But you have very elaborated view, object, view, story, and you are caught up with it. And in the middle of all those things, you're not conscious at all. You're not conscious. This is happening to you. It's just happening to you, but you're not aware of it at all. That is like a, what we call samsaric dream. You can call it like a samsaric daydream. When it happens during the daytime, it's like a samsaric daydream. And if it happens in the night while you're sleeping, it's called samsaric sleep. It means just ordinary samsaric activity. 
based on emotions and conceptual mind caused by interaction and actions. Secondly, caused by interaction and action. It, it's just happening constantly. So how often, if you're during the daytime, how often it happens? You can be driving for five hours on the, on the highway, and throughout all the five hours, you're active thinking and imagining that all these things are happening, but there was in one moment, there was not a conscious. And everything what was not conscious, and all these emotion thoughts, and particularly negative emotion thought, particularly repeating emotion thought. Same thing, you know, as, as like a mantra, you're repeating again and again. Oh, that person is really bad. Oh, that person is very bad. That person is really very really bad. That person is really bad. That person is really bad. That. And you're playing music, and even though it's going melo, <laughs> you're listening to the music, but it's uh, really bad, you know. <laughs> Topic has not changed. Nothing has changed, but it, Sometimes it's melodic, sometimes a little bit more sleepy, sometimes it's more wakeful. But it's the same story repeating, repeating again. And it's very, very, it affects, it affects, it affects negatively. The moment you are conscious of it, you might not be able to change it. It's, it's, your relationship is already different. And that, I mean, that piece is a very important part I've been emphasizing that a little bit these days, that regardless of your ability to change or not, being aware is already making differences. So don't try to undermine the awareness which is not able to change. Value enough the awareness as awareness regardless of its strength. So, so that is what it is. So it's happening during the daytime. If you take that same two example into the night. You have a long day. You're going to sleep. And, you know, during the meditation, sleeping meditation, we hear it. <laughs> Some of you, at least. <laughs> Within one minute, you're gone. And others, you're waiting for the bell, you're not going to sleep. So those you go really, really fast, you know, moment you go into that place, it's like a conscious, totally unconscious. Dark, 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 dark. So that dark, which you sleep, where you're entering into, it's like a dark room. That's the metaphor it gives. That's the dark room. Your awareness is like the window, sees both sides, outside and inside. But if awareness is not there, if the window is not there, then it just remains the dark room. So for us, it, that, that the dark room is like the ignorance. The candle it's like the clear light or the awareness. Candle is the awareness. The flame, the source of candle, the awareness, it, it says it's a dharmakaya. It's our inner, essential, eternal body or the body of light. And we access that through awareness. If you're aware, then you know the sources of, sources of awareness is like to that flame. The flame is like, it says it's like a dharmakaya. So 
So whole interest is basically in the teaching whole whole interest is where I'm going to discover the clear light, where I'm going to find myself. Right? In our if you look in the journey of life, each individual story journey of life, it's amazing stories. In the West, and during hippie time, many people took many different journeys. <laughs> Journey, um, many different forms of journeys, yeah. Don't have to go to the details here. <laughs> At least physically go to India or something like that, right? But maybe nobody thought about, I can just go to sleep. <laughs> Cheaper. <laughs> easier. Less risk. I'm going to go to sleep to explore myself. But people do take a lot of uh, risky journeys in order to find. So according to this teaching, he's saying basically there's a clearly possibility in the state of sleep to find clear light, to find Buddha nature, to find yourself. So that some sense of some sense of enough trust to saying, "Wow, right here, right in everyday life, right in every every day, what I do, not what I don't do, and I have to do something new." It's the possibility is there. I think that's that's seems like a kind of very, very important. And then, of course, you know, um, it's obviously it's not that easy for clearly, you know, like, I mean, this is what it is, you know, one, one time, uh, one monk, uh, one Geshe who used to live in Charlotte's home, and uh, in some traditions, they don't teach these things that, 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 that much. And uh, so, it's there, but not tradition of teaching that much or practicing that much. So he said, I heard you teach dream yoga practice. What are you talking about? And in some sense, you know what I'm talking about, but he says, how is it possible? How, how, how they can get it? Or how even, I think, I think even probably very likely, he's also saying, I'm not going to get it. I don't get it. How they will get it? I mean, I'm, I'm in a sense, he's not referring to me, he's referring to himself, saying, these are two, just too difficult to, to get it, so forget about it. So there are many things, and sometimes in a different traditions, these very profound, equally ordinary experiences are kept very far away from oneself. They're giving this possibility of somebody might, it's taken away. I don't think it's really good at all. I mean, who can tell who is right? If you take that possibility away from somebody, it seems like a horrible, not giving that chance. So I'm, as, I, as I teach, I, I feel, you know, as I said, when I'm talking, we are talking about awareness, you know, you might not experience a clear light 
at least if you're aware you're angry. That's the good, good start. So many different layers and levels of awareness that ordinary people can, can go and access and grow and deeper and deeper into. And when you put, when you, when you put people to sleep, at least one thing you can see, there's, I don't know how, how most of the people experience this, one thing you see is there's so much time and space and dimension of your mind is getting so much more expanded in that moment. What usually you thought was like one minute you go to sleep. But you see, there's so much things happening before even you fall asleep. You're conscious, you're aware of so many. Time is longer. The awareness is expanded. Perception is you know, wider. Your sense of what's happening in you, you feel more. And then some point, you have some deep experiences. Just because we tried. So, so that's the sleep, you know. Okay. So, so does it, is it clear? Like, so example of the dream and sleep is not very different from the waking state of when you are, when you're conscious. Uh, when you're conscious, for example, um, you're, you're awakened and you, f- as I said, you feel challenged, you feel discomfort, you're aware of it, and you, you're aware of it, and you feel like, uh, okay, oh, I'm aware of it, I can see uh, where it's trying to go, or I can see it, if, I, if I don't guide it, if I don't turn into a little bit with awareness into a practice in the, by the afternoon I can see it might go into a not good place. Because maybe you already have some experiences in the past. But when, and since you're aware, you, I'm aware of these feelings, this emotion and these conditions. I'm aware I can guide. I am aware if I guide it, it will be better. I'm aware there's a possibility to stop it. So with those awareness, I feel maybe in, a, in, in 15 minutes later, I feel thoughts are still there, concerns are still there, but it's not taking away my existence fully away. I'm able to say, it's okay, let's see what happens. We'll deal with it when, when whatever will happen able to fill that space. If you do that, then it's like a lucid dream. You knew it's a dream, and you were not fully affected by it. You managed to change it. Better will be when any difficult situation, any painful situation, you look at it, you look at that, Asking questions like, what is the best out of this? What this pain is trying to teach me? What this conflict is trying to lead me in a specific direction? Because that conflict is clearly can lead you in a very positive direction. That pain can definitely take you in a deep places of discovery. What is the highest purpose of this pain and this conflict? Not the lowest, you know, effect of this pain and pain and conflict. If you ask that question, you begin to you begin to see different things. Okay. I can be more open, I can be nicer, I need to connect, I need to, to let go, I need to do change. I don't know. It, it basically redirects, these experiences are redirecting you. So no experience could be wasted. No pain can be wasted. They're trying to redirect you. 
Only if you're conscious of them, then you're able to redirect them. But some, some direction, what it, it took you, maybe no, any other teaching cannot do it. But on your, only, your own fear did it, but not any teacher or any teaching can do it. Because in, in a way, if, to any teacher or any teaching, you have to have the same deep relationship, which most of the time people don't have. But to your pain, you have good enough, deep, long-standing relationship. <laughs> so, so this, so this, this incredible um, a possibility where Like everybody who have near death experiences, everybody says they have experiences of seeing light, tunnels, light, feeling sense of free. It, it sounds like a, many people or probably almost all people who have those experiences, when they come back, they are a different person. They're not the same person anymore. Something deep shift, development take place there. Some recognition take place there. They're different people. They say, I mean, they, even the researchers, they say that. They're, they're, they're much more spiritual person when they come back. So think about that. You know, we, we don't know you're going to have a near-death experiences or not. <laughs> but you, we do have a sleeping experiences every day. And the sleeping experiences every day, day can be Nearer death experiences every day. So you have so much, so many times the opportunity to have near death experiences. Every moment, throughout the day, 24 hour cycle. So day is connected to the better to the night. Night is connected better to the day. What is that? better connection of the day and night means, means more space, more awareness, and more warmth. The worst connection of the day and night means horrible day, nightmare, and worst day, worst night. So the worst day and the night is keep on connecting again and again and again. Just imagine where it's going to take you. At least 50% you have a chance to break, take a rest, go crazy during the daytime, not go crazy in the night. Go crazy during the daytime, not go crazy in the night time. Instead, go crazy, help to go crazy more. So that's not a very, very, very good connection. So the connections are important. For example, just think about this. Naturally, when you wake up in the morning, it's a beautiful, beautiful. Regardless of you do your your any exercises or not, for me when I get up in the morning, very often most of the time I try to do at least two hundred prostrations a day. When I do my prostrations, and and then it feels incredible. But even when I don't do my prostration, mind is very calm, very clear. And it's not only me, it's, it's a gift for everybody has that. Everybody has a gift of Buddhas or God to have some little peace in the morning. It's the package comes with the human body. <laughs> you wake up, you feel that. But how many people recognize that and take advantage of that? 
oh, this is what he was talking about. Yes, it's true, it's so peaceful, it's wonderful. This is nice. If it's that, if it's this nice, what should I do with this, you know? I mean, uh, what should I do with this? Just be. Just be aware. It's like if I'm, if I'm, if I love this flower, what should I do? Keep on looking, keep on enjoying. Not take my eye away from it. Oh, I love it. <laughs> Not like that, right? I love it. Wow, I love it. Wow, what a color, you know, I love it. What is this? Looking closer, paying more closer attention, spending more time with it. Same way, that time that you feel in the morning, you do that. And of course, you cannot do for all, all forever, you know, so you have to get your breakfast, get, find your car key, you know, look at the traffic, whatever, go to the office, whatever, whatever you have to do, you see, immediately your actions interfering that peace. Your actions interfering that peace, for 99% of the people, that's what's happening. But for some people, that peace is interfering the actions, changing the actions. They're not finding their car key, but not going crazy. Ah. Where's my car key? It's completely okay to not find it today, you know. It would be fine not finding it today. Maybe intentionally I put it somewhere that I cannot find it, right? So you, that, the experience of that space, space and awareness, strong enough, connected enough, directed enough toward changing the actions of what is coming toward you. That is the gap. So that is the transition. Morning transition into action transition. So that transition is what well, most people practice that. So instead of action changing you, you change the action. People, people, when people come to the retreat, they say, oh, you know, it's a so beautiful experience during here, and then after, when they leave here, they said, you know, they lose the experiences right away or something. They, they say when they smell the car, and immediately every whole samsaric dream comes back. <laughs> Open the car. Okay. Doesn't have to be, Right? Open the car, you send it out. The experience you're having in, 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 in internally, that space or something. So does it make sense? So space, awareness, leading into action. And then whatever action that you are doing during the daytime, see how much of it maintaining that awareness or how much less maintaining that awareness. You're trying to observe. Maybe you started well, maybe it did not continue. Still, still you started well. Or maybe you saw it, it going quite away. Maybe you saw it come back and forth. So then, another transition, it's like around 3, 4 o'clock or something like that. When you begin to lose the energy. When you begin to lose the energy, we know that we cannot, you cannot hold any more. I mean, even smokers, you know, it's interesting. Smokers, they have a very specific schedule to smoke. Probably that's what it is. Each time when they smoke, maybe that's the signal where they should be aware. Reminder of, it's not that they should smoke, a reminder of awareness. You lose it. And then in the evening, so intention to go to sleep until you fall asleep. There's a period. It's very important. 
Most of the people, what you do, do, people do in this country, maybe watch TV. Not only watch TV, but in, as I mentioned, in Houston, in, uh, in hospice, their last few days. What, you, I, what I saw in a hospice room was a big te television and a big remote control there. Before they die, and after they die, there's a one flower. That's the last, last image. Last image of their favorite channel. It's incredible. So last image before you go to sleep, what, 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 is, what is your? So of course, at least we, we all know, you know, you need, you, you need to do, plan the day, you need to check mails, or you need to do, you, we keep on doing things, right? But at least trying to be a little bit more careful. So at some point, saying, okay, that's, this, this is it. To turn, turn, turn it off, you know. Especially nowadays, people talking about, you know, not having a device too close to, you, too close to your bed. And shut it down. That's what I do, to shut it down. So then, once you fall asleep, then it's, it's question about, you, you have to see what happens. So what happens will define very much that moment. Intention to go to sleep until you go to sleep. Those moments will define very much what will happen next. So, Yeah, so anyway, I think, um, so this, yeah. You mentioned the term clear light several times. Can you just explain briefly what that means? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the request is, I have mentioned clear light, which, is, which was not that clear. So a little more explanation about what clear light is, okay? Yeah, that, that's fine. So in, in this tradition, what he's saying is we all are that clear light. We all are that Buddha. So you can say, I am that Buddha, I am that clear light. That's a very good way of saying it, brave way of saying it. And instead of saying me and Buddha, <laughs> right? So if you, if, you say, if you feel like me and Buddha, then you can say, okay, that's, forget about me and Buddha, right? But there is Buddha and clear light in me, in me, right? So that what that clear light is, there's a two word, clear and light. Clear means you're clear. You're clear. That's what it means. You're, you're space. And somebody says, no, me clear today? No. No, you're clear. You can go. At the airport, there's a, they have a program called CLEAR. What do they call it? CLEAR. I think they call it CLEAR. I have that. It's, very, it's incredible. And then you go there, and you, they put, put your two fingerprint. And nowadays, just boarding pass and two fingerprint, they escort you all the way to the security gate. And uh, what means? You're clear. You can go. CLEAR means no problem. That's what it means. No conditions, no duality, no blockages. Clear. That space, basically, a simple way, clear equals empty or space. Light, it's different. And I usually, 
you know, I, I've been thinking about doing it last few days, but I can f keep on forgetting. If you think about having like a glass, like a pipe like this, if you light a torch, if you have a torch and you put a torch from the top down, and when you turn it off, torch, it will immediately illuminate the, the, the pipe, right? So, and during the meditation, I've been saying that. I don't know if you've been noticing that or paying attention to that. I've been saying, be, draw your attention to the, to the central channel. It's clear and open as effect of the nine breathing or purification. When you're aware of it, it's illuminated. Have you heard that? Have you noticed that? I have been saying that consistently last few days. Have you noticed that? I hope so. <laughs> Reason why I repeat continuously, because it means something very specific. That's why I keep on repeating same way continuously. What does that mean? That means the moment you're aware of it, it, it illuminates. The moment you're not aware of it, it, it does not illuminate. It remains dark. Because the awareness is the light. When I'm aware of this flower, I see the beauty. Flower can be here for a whole week. And somebody is paying a lot of attention to this beautiful flower, getting the water, picking the right flower, and putting here in front of me, and I haven't seen this flower at all whole week, you know. So imagine all the Buddha, Bodhisattva is doing all the things for you to just, we're doing everything for you, for you just simply to recognize, please. <laughs> we're preparing everything for you. Your job is simply to be conscious. We're giving you. Where? Moment you're aware. Light. That's light. Clear light. So you can have experiences of clear, but not light. Maybe, for example, when somebody, big lot, and this is just coming up, new idea coming up in my mind right at this moment. Like somebody is somebody feel deep experience of lost, maybe even some, sometime even depression, some sense of depression is like nothingness. Or, or, or completion of something. But when, some, when, when you feel totally empty of something, in a good way or bad way, but until you're conscious of it, it doesn't become so good. Does that make sense? Uh, I don't know. For example, if you work every day, if you work every day, then you say, oh, my God. Whole month I didn't, I didn't have a free time. Next Sunday is I'm free. Next Sunday I am free. Next Sunday I am clear. Next Sunday I'm open. Why, why the next Sunday is so exciting? Because I look whole month. It was not clear. It was this and that. I've been working so hard. But people who don't work at all, every Sunday is this boring, empty <laughs> Sunday. What to do with this Sunday? These, these both groups are ex equally experiencing clear, but one is experiencing light. And the other one is only, it's clear, but it's a negative clear, like a sleep. You feel it's a dark, you don't see it. It's a dream, you feel like you're lost with your thoughts and emotions and conditions. You don't see the opportunity to discover 
and redirect. So that's what clearer light means. Basically, another, another more simple way to look will be clear light is the enlightened nature is in you, in everybody, in everything, in every thought, in every feeling, every emotion, even your sadness. How many people actually would look, look at sadness and trying to find a joy? Not many. Only Dzogchen practitioners do that. <laughs> How many people would look at fear and s smiling at fear and joking at fear and playing with fear and ignoring fear and being free from fear by being conscious, going closer. How many people do? No. What people do? They, they don't have to have a fear. They even run idea of fear. They run away from it. Because deep-rooted experience of fear can only go away by bringing out and bringing aware, not by running away and avoiding. And, just, and many people do that, exactly. They run away, they avoid, and they feel they're free. So that's what the clear, clear light is, you know. I sometimes tell people that simple way. I say, like a joy. Joy. If you ask, what makes you happy? Can this moment can make you happy? Then you say, this moment? Let me look. <laughs> you might say, yes, absolutely, you know, absolutely. The best moment. And every moment is right moment, best moment to be happy. No matter how difficult it is, no matter how painful it is, no matter, so, no excuses. But of course, it doesn't work like that. Well, I say, you say, oh, you know, I have a big project. After this big project, then I'll be happy. <laughs> I'm in a transition. After I'm settled, I'm, I'll be happy. I'm selling house, I will sell my house, then I'll be happy. I'm buying house, after I buy my house, I'll be happy. I'm getting married, and I'll be happy. I'm getting divorced, then I will be happy. <laughs> Everybody is saying every opposite than what they are in, to be happy. Those who are divorced, they're looking for one to be happy. Those who are with one, they're trying to get divorced to be happy. Everybody's looking totally opposite to be happy. But how that, how? So I know maybe that's how you feel, but at least even you rationalize. You cannot say that. This, this must be, could be a good, good time to be happy. And if you really closely look, there's no, not a moment where you cannot be happy. So, so and most of the time, it's easier to be happy for most people. So you say, this is the mantra. You say, now, this is the moment to be happy. Right now is the moment to be happy, or I will never be happy, knowing myself. Then you, the next thought will come. It will say, not, no, not now. 
after after something. No, no, no. Okay, after something, when you hear that voice, every time you hear that voice, right? Not now, but after something. That is a confirmation of it is now. <laughs> so don't 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 take that. Don't you make that voice to confirming or making you doubt, but use that voice as a confirmation. That's the smart ego. So you can say to that smart ego, I know you have smart ego, but I'm clear light. <laughs> this time, it doesn't work. Sorry. It doesn't work. And the moment when you the moment you have that awakening, you are right there. You're right there. Everything's fine. <laughs>